Hello, my name is Gavin Watson and uh, today is December 17th, 2023 and I have not posted anything in a long time um, because I've not been building anything in a long time but I'm about to embark on a new uh, building project and it's an electric boat. Um, so this is a uh, one eighth scale model of what it'll look like. It's a little one sixteenth scale model. I made this first. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is going to be a video about um, the design and what I'm uh, going to be doing, how I'm going to uh, put this together. And then, uh, so this, this this talk will probably be longer than most of the other videos. Most of the other ones are probably the usual five minutes. This is what I've been doing. This is what I'm doing next kind of thing. Um, but this one here, I wanted to go over um, the overall thing so that you know what I'm doing as a starter. So um, <clears throat> I've been wanting to build an electric boat for a long time. My wife has been really wanting a um, picnic boat that we can go out and, and explore islands uh, with the family. So, and we're in Penobscot Bay in, uh, Maine, um, uh, on, uh, North Haven Island. So, uh, it can get pretty rough out there. Um, uh, the waves can get pretty big. Um, uh, but, um, obviously most of the time when we go off on a picnic, we're going to pick nice days and that sort of thing, but you never know. So, um, I wanted to have something that could handle those waves. Um, take care of um, traveling at least 30 miles, um, probably, hopefully a lot more than that, and this should definitely do that. Um, and I was looking at a lot of different designs and a lot of different, had a lot of different thoughts on it. And what I, you know, I thought about multi-hulls, I thought about catamarans, trimarans, that kind of thing, but I really wanted to be able to have a um, monohull thought about narrow, uh, long monohulls with little outriggers and, and that sort of thing, but eventually settled in on, um, this sort of design. So this was, um, inspired by the Phil Bolger, um, Idaho, um, design. You can take a look at that. There's a, um, good YouTube channel, um, called Baby Blue or, or the boat's called Baby Blue. I'm not, don't exactly remember the name of the the channel but they're great you know some great videos of them uh, small you know family going out with their two kids on a on a one of these boats um that inspired my thinking so the um, idaho design is basically five feet wide 31 feet long so very much longer and narrower than your typical um, outboard motorboat <clears throat> and the benefit or the beauty of that <clears throat> is you uh it's, it's much more efficient at lower speeds and also at high speeds you've got a very flat aft section here so it planes relatively easily the idaho design is basically just a flat bottom the whole way up it doesn't have this sort of keel um, system here that i've put on um, it's basically um, very flat there's about a four inch um, curve um, up here at the bow um, on the, on the Idaho design, it's just very, very slight um, curve here and the rest of the whole thing is, is uh, flat. Um, so the beauty of that is, of course, it makes it super, super easy to build, um, very straightforward, you know, a bunch of plywood, some epoxy and uh, a bit of fiberglass and you're all set um, and you can build a boat very quickly and, and easily. So the idea um, behind uh, my design is also similarly that I want something, uh, I want to be able to do a design that would work for a lot of people, be very inexpensive to build, and um, that would allow them to go on some some uh, big adventures uh, and that kind of thing. But um, I wanted to have something that would travel through the waves a lot better. So um, what I did, and also be um, very efficient. So what I did was I added this um, keel system down here. The um, the idea behind this is is a you know the longer and narrower um, a hull is, the less resistance is going through the water. Um, obviously, if you are a typical motor boater, um, you just drive your you know you've got a Boston Whaler or um, Aqua Sport or Mako or something like that, you're just going to drive it until. Um, if you go around low speed, it, you don't uh, you just make a big hole in the water. Um, so you just give it a bunch of gas and you pop up on a plane. Um, with a boat 
that's as long and narrow as this, it, it will travel at a much higher um, speed um, without creating that big hole in the water. And when you do go up on a um, plane, it'll plane off very um, easily because there's it's it's so long and so flat aft here. Um, it is very narrow, um, so that could make it a bit more tippy. The um, Idaho design looks really good. The videos look look great. It doesn't look like it's um, it's very unstable. Um, but since I've got a bunch of batteries I need to put in this thing, I thought, why not um, put them down low um, in a space um, where it makes sense and get that weight down low uh, in the middle of the boat. So um, this is the larger uh, model that I built. And this is just a little bit wider. So this will be 31 feet long and it'll be six feet wide. So just a little bit wider than, than this one here. And as you can see, there's a space here in the keel space for the batteries to go. Um, let me tilt it up on its side here. So you can see the keel shape here on this boat. Um, in the finished boat, the, um, the one I'm gonna be building, I'm actually just gonna bring this keel all the way out to the end. Um, and the part, this part of the keel here is essentially uh, flat and then it curves up a little bit here aft um, and it curves up here at the bow. And the beauty of that is, is that the batteries can all be sitting in, in this space in here and I can uh, bring it up and onto a beach and it can, I can just beach it or park it on a mud flat or something like that if I if I need to and um, this will distribute the weight of all the batteries really nicely so there's going to be about 880 pounds of batteries in this um, and it'll be powered by two uh, e-propulsion x12 um, outboard motors so the x12s are um, there's an x12 x20 x40 um, those are new outboard motors that are just coming out this year so they should be out um, in the spring and I'm going to be using the e-propulsion uh, G102-100 batteries um, <clears throat> and they'll go um, in this space here. So those, the beauty of those batteries, if you, you can um, uh, put them in uh, vertically so that the control panel face is facing up and then this dimension here is only 12 inches wide and this dimension here is about 20 inches wide and they're about 26 27 inches inches tall um, so they will fit in um, this boat um, with the top of the battery being just a little bit above the um, deck so um, this is this deck here is a is and is different from the bottom here. So they've got the bottom of the boat here, and then a and then a space in between, and the deck on the top. The um, deck will be about 12 inches above the water line up forward here, and about six inches above the water line aft. So any water that hits this will just run right out. Um, there'll be two X12 outboards back here. Um, I like to have two because I like redundancy. Plus I don't want to park one here in the middle um, because then it'll be in the shadow of this of this keel. Um, and there's definitely going to be some turbulence and drag coming off of that. And I want don't want the, that to interfere with the outboard. So the outboards will be out here on the side, which will also give me um, uh, great maneuverability. I can put one in forward, one in reverse, um, crank the thing around. Uh, <clears throat> these outboards in this control system all, or all, are all steer by wire. So um, the steering wheel, there's just a couple of wires going back here to the two steering motors on the on the outboards so that they will turn in, in sync. And then they also will have uh, the ability to hold position or actually move the boat sideways or, you know, all kinds of different things like the, the newer types of outboards can do. So... All that will be seriously cool. Um, I am going to make this back section here be able to drop down um, just like a, uh, you know, on the back of a truck a tailgate kind of thing that that drops down. So there'll be outboard here and outboard here. The center section will drop down. It might actually be like a folding piece that that goes out like this um, so that I can back the boat right up um, to the beach 
drop this down and then people can just like walk on and off without um, getting uh, wet. Um, and so we don't need a dinghy or any of that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just showing you a little bit more what the boat looks like. Um, this will be, um, this curve will not um, be shaped like this quite so much. I'm gonna actually go down here a foot deeper on this. So I've got a, a sharper, taller bow. So <clears throat> this part, this um, part here is curved a little bit um, more steeply than it is on this uh, little model, but I'm going to have the keel section um, a little bit more like the, like the small model over there, um, <clears throat> which should be, make it better for going through, through waves and that sort of thing. Um, the goal is to have most of the boat's um, displacement taken up by the um, keel so that the water line um, will be just kissing the bottom um, going out here so that it doesn't create a whole lot of um, drag, but this will give it lots of stability, especially, you know, as you accelerate, um, it'll, it'll basically be, you know, planing and, and give a lot of extra stability there as well as, of course, the, all the way to the batteries. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Oh yeah, so, so when I made this, um, uh, model here. I also um, made extra pieces for the um, hull construction um, as, as uh, miniature one uh, uh, one eighth inch size templates essentially. So this is the um, keel um, part here. Um, you can see the this line here is the, the line that the um, bottom um, of the boat attaches to the keel there. Um, <clears throat> This line here, this is the um, deck line. Uh, so this part here is about 12 inches above the above the water line, and then it tapers down here to about six inches above the water line um, back here. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, so so this boat will be 30. Oh yeah. So anyway, so this is the keel. This is the side template. This is the bottom. Um, so I, you know, basically need two full size pieces like this, two full size pieces like that for the two sides. Um, four of these deck pieces because it's there's really very little difference between um, the bottom of the boat and the deck part inside. So I'm just going to make four pieces essentially like that. And then this little leftover bit from um, that gets cut out for the battery part is um, this little piece in here. So I've got a little um, piece on an angle in here. And the, the point of that is just to, uh, to minimize a little bit of the wave, um, you know, waves and, and water and stuff slapping on here just to divert it outwards a little bit. Um, but also I want a little shelf here so any spray and stuff gets directed out to the side. Um, <clears throat> so this boat is 30 feet long or 31 feet long. My shop is only uh, 22 feet long. So I'm going to be building the boat in two parts. I'm going to do the front section here as one part. Um, so, you know, essentially like 15 and a half feet long uh, section here and then the sec the back part I'm going to build separately and then put the two pieces together. So there'll be four um, pieces of plywood that go into each one of these things here. I've got the plywood is coming from Chesapeake Lightcraft and they're putting the puzzle joint um, in it for me so that I can uh, basically lay um, the plywood sheets out. So I'm going to, I just need one or two days where the weather is good. I can open up the garage door, um, run these, put these sheets all together, um, just interlock them, um, mark all these lines out and, um, you know, put uh, little brads in on the, on the full size sheets, bend a batten around it, mark all those out. Once those are um, done on three sample pieces, then I can take um, the individual plywood sheets and transfer that information to the other um, ones um, 
<clears throat> if I want to do it that way, or I might just lay them um, all the way out. But I, the the idea is to, you know, is that that the other side just basically has to mirror these sides. So you know, none of these curves are very um, are incredibly specific or or you know anything like that. This is just you know flat here to halfway up, and then this um, you know half halfway along the boat, and then um, there's a curve. So you know there's a uh, distance height um, going up here and basically just you know lock in that position lock in this position bend the batten so it makes a nice curve mark that and just make sure that the side you know the other side is a mirror image of that um, and that'll um, work out so I'm trying to think if there's anything oh yeah so I did do a mock-up of the um, batteries so this is this box um, frame here is equivalent to four of the e-propulsion um, G102-100 um, batteries. Each one of those batteries is 10 kilowatts. Um, so there'll be essentially 40 kilowatts of um, power um, on the boat, <clears throat> plus a 12 volt battery for the 12 volt stuff. The um, each of the batteries weighs 100 kilos, so that's 220 pounds, and so the, and there's four of them, so it's 880 pounds of batteries. Um, so that will be a substantial amount of weight. Um, and then this part here will fit right in the center of the boat in that keel section here. Um, so that will create a lot of stability, plus um, it's always really good to have all your, your weight centered in the boat. The rest of the plywood and the epoxy and everything in this should weigh around um, 1,200 pounds. So between the batteries and the um, rest of the boat stuff, we're looking at um, essentially, you know, round numbers, 2,000 pounds um, for that. The outboard motors are a couple hundred pounds um, between the two of them. I think they're like 100 and 100 pounds or something like that each. Um, they're not that heavy. And then, um, you know, maybe there's 800 pounds of, of people on board, um, that sort of thing. So we're looking at, you know, 3,000 pounds um, altogether. So I'm just going to make sure that this um, keel section is displacing about that much, um, just a little less than that much water. And then this aft section here should just be kissing the water back there. And it should have extremely low drag and be really, really smooth uh, going through waves. Um, and then as I accelerate, it should um, leave almost no wake at all and be incredibly efficient. So that's the idea. Um, that's that's a really long video. It's 18 minutes. So um, I think I'll, I'll stop there and uh, <clears throat> I'll be... Once I get the wood in here, um, the plywood and everything should be arriving in the next week or so. Um, so once that gets here, I'll, I'll you know, do some videos of the, the progress uh, along the way. But I wanted to do this, this first one so you could see the whole thing um, and get the idea. Thanks.